The Fujifilm X-H1 is a phenomenal camera that is great for beginner to intermediate photographers, videographers, documentary filmmakers, cinematographers. Basically, if you are looking for a new camera to use to level up from your iPhone or an entry level camera in general, then check out the Fujifilm X-H1. With that, in this video, I'll be talking about three reasons why you should not choose the Fujifilm X-H1, although I just said that it's a great camera for entry-level photographers and videographers. But the three reasons are a few things I thought about after making my nine reasons why you should choose the Fujifilm X-H1. I felt I should make this video because the past videos that I've made about the Fujifilm X-H1 basically gives it a five-star rating, but it does have its issues like all cameras. For instance, reason number one, the autofocus. The Fujifilm X-H1's autofocus is unreliable 30% of the time based on my experience. Compared to newer cameras today, its autofocus isn't that great, but it is better than the Panasonic cameras I've used in the past. I can't say that the autofocus is hit or miss. It's hit about 70% of the time, but then there's that 30% where you find yourself having to re-record over and over a few times just to get you know a peace of mind. However, if you mostly use manual focus, then the autofocus really doesn't matter. The only time I really use autofocus is when I'm talking to the camera like this. And here are the settings I use in this camera to make sure the autofocus is locked on. You do not have to use manual focus for locked on shots like this, but you can if you want to. But where I find autofocus fails is when I'm trying to lock onto a moving target, but even then I feel like the camera still locks onto the person fairly well. Where it just really doesn't work is when you are moving and you're trying to track a moving target. But speaking of moving targets, the IBIS or the in-body image stabilization is a second reason why you should not choose the Fujifilm X-H1 if that is something that you're looking for definitely need in a camera. And that's with a caveat. If you do not have a stabilized lens, then using the stabilization while walking and tracking the talent is horrible. However, the IBIS works perfectly when you are standing still in one place and maybe moving slightly for dramatic effect then the IBIS is great. But as we all know, we want to walk with the camera and run alongside someone to get a more interesting shot. The X-H1 IBIS just isn't made for that. Just use a gimbal. The IBIS in this camera has its time and place to be used. But if you know you want some high action shots where you don't want to use a gimbal and you don't have a stabilized lens, then do not choose the X-H1. Also, if you are a shooter that likes to travel light, not carry too much gear and have a compact setup and pass up on an X-H1 because for a full day shoot, you're gonna need at least eight batteries depending on what you are shooting. If you don't mind carrying eight batteries, then go with the, go with the X-H1. It's, it's not a bad camera. But this is leading into reason number three, battery life. The Fujifilm X-H1 takes the older batteries, not the newer ones that you find in the X-T3 and X-T4. The battery life is horrendous but you can find some cheaper third-party batteries online you will get an error message saying you should use native batteries if you can find some for the cheap then get the native batteries however you're going to be needing like 20 of them yes that is an over exaggeration but it is necessary and if you're thinking of getting the black magic cinema camera or the canon r5 or any of those other overpowered cameras that take subpar batteries then you will be in the same boat. Basically what I'm saying, there are definitely other overpowered cameras, newer cameras that suffer from the same issue that the X-H1 suffers from. So this is not a localized issue of the Fujifilm X-H1. It's a great camera, definitely overpowered camera for the small batteries that it takes. Now you can use a battery grip with the X-H1 to extend the battery life without having to switch the batteries out as often. You basically get one battery in the body and two batteries in the grip. I've gotten through a full day's photo shoot on three batteries max, which isn't bad. However, with the a 7 IV, I can get through two to two and a half days max on one battery. That doesn't mean to go out and get the a 7 IV. It's worth it, but then it's not when you when compared to the Fujifilm X-H1. Sure, it's a more updated camera, but the X-H1 basically holds its own even compared to the a7 IV. Just go out into the world as prepared as you can be with whatever you do. With all of that said, there was a comment left on my nine reasons why you should choose the Fujifilm X-H1 by MGML and it says, you forgot to mention the body is 25% thicker than the other X-T1, 2, 3, and 4 models. It's also been available for relatively bargain price ever since the X-T3 and 4 came out. So with that, I'm gonna tack that on as another reason why you should get the X-H1. Thanks for sharing that, MGML. Maybe I'll update it to 10 reasons why you should get the Fujifilm X-H1. But thank you all for liking, subscribing, sharing this video, and staying awesome. Stay awesome.